God is good and all the time. And let's start to a responsive reading. 790 in the back of our hymnal. 790. <coughs> Psalm 66, verses 8 through 20. And we will read it responsively. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of God's praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have us. You have tried us and still time. You have brought us into the net. You have you've laid aff afflictions on our loins. You met people right over our heads. We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us forth to a spacious place. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, that which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer you the burnt offerings of heavens with the smoke of Come and hear, all you who worship God, and I will tell what God has done for me. I cried out to God, who was highly praised when I was done. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened, and has given me to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer. The Word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. This time Paul will bring us a lectionary reading. The first lectionary reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 29. We we'll do first one, verse one, then skip four through seven. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Verse 4, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For it is written, for it is written, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you and do not listen to the dreams that they dream. And to finish verse 7, the way I should have, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for it is written, you will find your welfare. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The second lectionary reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. And in my Bible it's titled, titled Be Thankful. While Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, he was going through the area between Samaria and Galilee. As he came into a small town, ten men who had a skin disease met him there. They did not come close to Jesus, but called to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When Jesus saw the men, he said, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as the ten men were going, they were healed. When one of them saw that he was healed, he went back to Jesus, praising God in a loud voice. Then he bowed down at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and this man was a Samaritan. Jesus said, Weren't ten men healed? Where are the other nine? Is this Samaritan the only one who came back to thank God? Then Jesus said to him, Stand up and go your way. You were healed because you believed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Michelle couldn't be with us. And of course, 
Pastor Larry and Sandy are at a wedding for Sandy's son. And I know some of you say, well, didn't he just do that? Well, he did, but that was for Adam and Samantha. This is the other son. So uh, I think everything went, went fine yesterday, and we uh, hope they can come back to us safe and sound. Uh, for our announcements, note that the altar flowers are given today in honor of Michelle Pena's birthday. Michelle could not be here today. She let us know. The Christmas cantata practice has already begun. We practice at 5.30 on, on Wednesdays, and uh, we uh, quit promptly at a little before 6. Uh, so everyone can get to the Bible study at 6 if you can do that. But if, if not, be assured that you can uh, be through by 6 o'clock. Uh, we are starting our donations for our Thanksgiving food baskets. We anticipate having about 15 food baskets and you can bring uh, any staple goods for that uh, uh, canned goods and uh, we'll put those in the basement uh, of course be sure to check the expiration date they should be good through the end of the year the snively celebration we anticipate will be held uh, this year the field down there beside the church is, is pretty dry right now, and I don't see any rain, much rain in the forecast before then. So uh, when you come, you can park in the field out there and don't be afraid about pulling back in there because we want to leave plenty of room for uh, other people. And uh, I, I don't think there'll be any problem getting, getting anyone getting stuck, but if there were, we'd, we, we'll help you get out for sure. Okay. This is the season of uh, travel for many of our people and family reunions and uh, people are on the road. Many of our congregation are on the road today. Uh, on the 3rd, uh, November 3rd, uh, after church, we'll be having a, uh, a little celebration at Gaddy's, uh, mostly for the kids, but the adults are invited too, I assume, for that. And, uh, you see the details on that in your bulletin. Then that same day at three o'clock that afternoon, we have our annual charge conference at uh, Vogel Day United Methodist Church, uh, just down the river. And those usually don't last uh, very long at all. So we hope you can attend that. And then the uh, prayer fellowship for uh, this month, we are in prayer for the Whites Creek United Methodist Church located in the Catlisburg, Kentucky area. So those are our announcements. Let's go to the Lord in prayer then. Father, we are so thankful for this day that you've given to us that we can gather together and come and uh, worship you and also to remember those uh, among our uh, community and uh, among our church family, Father, that uh, need our prayers. And we lift those up to you now. And we ask that you would be with them and, and their families in this time. If, it's, uh, if they are enduring sickness or uh, hardship or even uh, a family situation, Father, we pray that you would be with them and that you would, they would use this opportunity to draw closer to you. All these things, Father, we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. One other note on the uh, announcements for the uh, Snively celebration. Uh, next Saturday about 10, uh, we usually go down and uh, uh, do a preparation, some of the men do, and uh, there's not really any cleanup to do they uh, uh, it was cleaned earlier in the year and so uh, and I'm going down this week and uh, knock the dust off a little bit inside so there's really not anything to do inside and I've spoken to the uh, uh, young man that takes care of the outside there and he's going to get that in shape for us but we do need uh, some tables carried outside and uh, that tent put up over top of that and uh, I think Larry uh, has put that up before, and I, 
I think he'll be there to, to help with, with that. I'm not going to be able to be there because I got a, another commitment on Saturday, but uh, uh, it shouldn't, it should take less than an hour to do all that for any one of the men that can be down there to do that. Our speaker today is Tommy Thornsbury, uh, our Gideon speaker, as we have uh, once each year, and we want to welcome him. Tommy and I go uh, a long way back. Tommy was a uh, trumpet player also, and he and I played together in the uh, Pitewell College band for a while. I think uh, Tommy was maybe from the Elkhorn City area at, at that time. Uh, I think he's with Pitewell Church now. And uh, I don't know how long he's been with the Gideons. Maybe he'll, he'll tell us that. But uh, it's a wonderful organization, and we're looking forward to hearing the message that, that Tommy would have for us. Please welcome. If we are the body, why it's his arms reaching? If we are the body, why aren't his arms reaching? I ask that question because I'm a Gideon. In the Matthew 28, 19, the Great Commission, the last thing Jesus said was, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. To all nations. And how... Are we going to go out and teach all nations? When I really read this and took it seriously, it made me belong to a getting organization that does their best to reach out to the world and give out Scripture. How else are we going to educate the world about Jesus? if not through God's Word. There's a blood that calls to life that paid my way. Yes, death was its price when it flowed down from the cross. My sins were gone, my sins for God. Yes, there's a grave that tried to hide this precious blood that gave me life, but in three days, he breathed again and rose to stand in our defense. So I come to tell you he's alive, to tell you that he'll dry every tear that falls. So I'll come to tell you that he saves to shout and proclaim that he's coming back for you. There's a blood that sights the blind, that'll heal the sick, the lonely finds. It has the power to free us all. That's all we need to do is go to Jesus. And that's what we're here about today. What are the Gideons? We're just born again Christian men. We put Bibles throughout the world, through hotels, doctor's office, hospitals, nursing homes. 
our main Bible that you see in the hotels, we give five, we buy so many of them. We give five dollars for them. The little bitty Bible, we buy millions of those each year. This is our little testament. We pay less our new contract. We actually got the price lowered. We paid less than a dollar and 25 cents for these. How can you honor somebody other than send them a Gideon honor card? We want to honor people when they pass away. If you got a Sunday school teacher, if you got a pastor, if you got somebody that does something good, honor them with the Gideon card in recognition. I'm not sure if y'all have a display here about the Gideon recognition. Recognize somebody. Buy some Bibles for somebody while they're alive. But also, when a, someone passes away, buy so many Bibles in their honor of their name that they'll get distributed everywhere. Send a Bible in memory of somebody. The Gideons are in over 200 countries. In over 90 languages, the Gideon Bibles are in every kind of ma language you can imagine. But let's talk about local. You know, we can talk about what we're doing in China. We can talk about what we're doing in India, in Africa. You know, I don't know if you realize it now. Right now, we have over 4 million Methodists in Africa, in some of the foreign countries. About 50, I used to be part of what's called the LACE, Leadership and Excellence in, for the Methodist Church. And one of the things that I learned here in the United States, our membership has gone down. We, about 50, 60 years ago, we were up around 14 million. Now we're still at 14 million, but about half of them are overseas. And one of the things that Gideon's helped do is get these Bibles out for people to read. And also, we go to jail. We have a jail service. The Gideon's have a jail service. Let me tell you, I can tell you, you a lot of times you'll have Gideon's that'll come in and they'll tell about somebody out in some foreign country that did this or some foreign country that did that. I like to tell a story about what happened here in Pike County. We were given Bibles at Hillbilly Days. As a matter of fact, we gave out 3,500 Bibles last Hillbilly Days. And there was a young man came over to me, and he had his friends with him. He had his friends with him. This wasn't by, it's so easy to give a little testimony when you're by yourself. But he has friends with him. And he came over to me and he said, you may not remember me, but you gave me a New Testament in the jail. A nice looking young man. Probably about 23. He said, and I took it to heart. I found me a church. I've been baptized. And he's telling this right in front of his friends. Now, my daughter goes to Trinity. I'm a Methodist. My daughter goes to Trinity. On Easter, she asked me to go to church with her. And you know how Easter goes, and Christmas, the church gets full, and we were sitting in our row, me, my wife, my grandkids, and my daughter and her husband, and our row was completely full. The church was full. And they asked the young kids to go out so they could have their youth. And during that time, there was about 30 or 40 people standing in the back that came down and sat down. One guy sat down in my row. It was me, my wife, grandson, and this guy. And I leaned over to my wife and I said, I think, and you might not hear me, I think I know that guy. I think I used to referee football. Boys basketball, girls basketball, baseball, fast pitch girls softball, used to do it all. I said, I think I used to referee with that guy. Well, after the church service was over, 
he stood up and he said, he shook my hand and he said, you gave me a Bible out, a Gideon Bible, just a few months ago. You told us that once we got out of here to find a church, he said, I found me a church. I've been baptized. So yes, the Gideon's Bible, he, it wasn't anything I said that night. It was that Bible I gave to him, let him read. And he found out for himself about the story of Jesus. And it made a difference in his life. We have the opportunity to make a difference in somebody's life. But we've got to do something about it. We have to ask people to come to Christ. As a Gideon organization, we, the Gideons, need your help. Pray for open doors. Pray for open doors. What do I mean by open doors? We used to go into the schools. I used to work for the school system. You have some teachers here that work for the school system. Used to work for the school system. We give, gave Bibles out to fifth graders and the seniors. We're no longer allowed to do that. What did it take? One letter. One letter from the ACLU making a little threat. Now we cannot do it. So we need your prayers. We need your prayers to, for us to get back into the school system and give out Bibles. When we, when we go there, we don't preach, we don't do anything. We just give out a Bible. If God has spoken to you, we need your financial help. Last year, the Gideons gave out over 80 million Bibles. We gave out 3,500 at Pillabilly days. We went up to the college, and we gave up out about seven or 800 of them. So we'd appreciate any help that you could give us. And why do we need your help? Because of the great commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That's what the Gideon organization is trying to do. Please help the Gideons. Please help us spread the word. Now I've also been asked to do a little message while I'm up here. We need to get out of the boat. We need to get out of the boat. That's what Jesus said to Peter. We need to get out of the boat. Can you imagine us being on that boat with Peter? And Jesus said, come. Not only did he say come, he said, Eli me. And that's another story, but that's, that was saying, it is I. That goes back to Exodus. The burning bush. The burning bush, God said, it is I. Jesus was declaring that he was the God. John 19, 25 through 27, the NIV version says, Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. His mother's sister married the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved, standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. I love the story of Peter. Now, John was the disciple, the beloved disciple. And my story today is, where was Peter? So many times I fall so short. I fall, I fail. I fail to witness when I, when I should. I make mistakes. So when I read about the Bible and I see where Peter made mistakes, it makes me feel good that these disciples lived with him. They worshiped with him. 
and yet they made mistakes. All the disciples had to abandon, except the beloved disciple, John. Peter! Peter! Nowhere to be found. Remember, Peter was his rock. But where's Peter? Let's go back in time just a little bit. Peter had seen Jesus heal many, many people. Peter had seen Jesus raise three people from the dead. Jesus walked on water with Peter. Jesus fed 5,000. Jesus, as the scripture said this morning, had just healed 10 lepers. Now only John was there. Where was Peter, his rock? When Jesus sent the two disciples to prepare for the last summer, supper, who did he send? Peter and John. At Gethsemane, Jesus took three disciples with him to pray. To his little private prayer. Peter was one of them. Jesus told Peter that he would deny him three times. Peter said, Jesus, you're Jesus told Peter, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter looked at him and said, I am ready to die for you, Jesus. I'm ready to die for you. But when it came time, where was Peter? I love the story of Peter. Satan is always at work on us. He was at work with, on Peter that night. Satan tempts us with money. He tempts us with gossip. He tempts us with leading us down the wrong path. And he tells us that it's okay to wait till tomorrow. There's a great story about Satan. Satan told, brought his best three demons to him. He said, I want to fool the Christians. Go out and find me some way to fool the Christians. So the demons left. And a few days later... Satan called him back and said, I want to find out what you want to do. The first demon came to Satan and said, let's just tell them there's no Jesus. Satan said, that won't work. Everybody knows there's a Jesus. My, I know there's a Jesus. This is Satan talking. I know there's a Jesus. That's not going to work. One of the other uh, demons said, well, let's tell them that Jesus didn't raise from the dead. Satan said, that won't work. 500 people saw Jesus at one time. The disciples have seen him. Many people saw Jesus after he was resurrected. The third demon went to Satan and said, let's tell him to wait till tomorrow. Satan looked at him and said, I'll give you anything you want. Because that's what life's about. When somebody asks us to do something, what do we normally say? Well, let me think about it and wait till tomorrow. I remember as a young man, I was sitting in a church. And I was sitting beside a Christian. I wasn't a Christian. And they were doing a hymn, hymnal there at the end to call people up, just as I am. And the guy beside me said, you probably need to go up. And my response was, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll wait. How many times do you know that somebody waits and puts it off until tomorrow? Do we deny Jesus in our actions? They ask Jesus, what the two great commandments? Love God and love your neighbor. Do we love our neighbor like we should? Who is our neighbor? Do we witness for Jesus? Well, I'm afraid I might upset somebody if I witness in front of them. Do your neighbors know you're a Christian? If someone went up where you live and they said, 
is that a Christian house right there? Would your neighbors be able to say, yes, that's a Christian house. I know, I see them go to church all the time. Do we miss church for ball games and stuff like that? Oop, oop, oop. It's things like sports events, playing golf. There was a preacher one time. Now, this is probably not a true story. There was a preacher one time that took a week off. And he was an average golfer. It was on Sunday he went golfing instead of going to church when he was on vacation. He hit his first hole in one. But he couldn't go back and tell anybody because he did it on Sunday. Maybe a true story. How many times have we been somewhere on Sunday? I know I have. Sometimes I've been on vacation, maybe had some excuse. During Jesus' trials in the courtyard, a servant girl said, this man was with him, and Peter denied it. Someone else said later, you are one of them, and Peter denied it. An hour or so later, Someone said, certainly this fellow was with him. He is a Galilean. And Peter denied it. And I love this part. It's only mentioned in one book of the Bible, Luke. Peter was out in the outer courtyard. And when he denied Jesus the third time, Peter happened to look, and Jesus was being on trial, probably from Cephas to the Sanhedrin, happened to walk by, and they met eye to eye, probably through the doorway. Can you imagine what Peter felt like? Here, Peter, Jesus had predicted it. Peter says, I'll die with you. Now Peter has denied him three times. And Luke mentions Jesus walking by and they saw each other eye to eye for only a second or so. Have you ever been talking about somebody, gossiping about somebody, and about that time they walked up? I have. Can you imagine what Peter felt like? his Lord and Savior, somebody he'd die for. The Bible says that Peter went and cried, wept over it. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what Peter went through? And then what happened? The crow, he heard the rooster. Peter wept bitterly. Do we follow Jesus' great commission? Do we go and teach in all nations? But here's the good side. Later on, what did Peter do? After Jesus was put to death, one of the most horrible deaths ever, being on the cross, once he was resurrected, once it, who was the first one to go in the tomb? John was leading, but when he got there, Peter ran in. Now brave Peter. And after the resurrection, I love this. When they'd finished, when they'd finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter answered, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And what did Jesus say? Feed my sheep. 
Are we feeding the sheep? Are we doing the Great Commission? Are we spreading Jesus' love throughout the world? Are we doing our part? I don't know about you guys, but we need to try our best. This world is getting really, really messed up. We need Christians. We need, we need to spread the word of love. Remember, Jesus said, love God and love one another. And if we did this, what a beautiful, beautiful world it would be. Yes, there's a blood that cost the life that paid my way. Death was its price. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we ask your blessing upon this group as we go from this house into the community and we pray that you would give us the courage and the wisdom to speak a word of testimony as Brother Thornsbury has laid upon our hearts today so powerfully. Make it so in our lives, Father, that we might do so. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.